on, but I think it's fine. I think we should not also accumulate much delay. All right. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> good morning and good afternoon, uh, and welcome to our today's webcast. Uh, the today's webcast is on India Spain wind energy dialogue, which has been initiated by GVEC along with the Embassy of Spain, with the CTTI, Spain Collaboration, and uh, Spain Association. Uh, this is a more of a dialogue where we are trying to share our the best practices and the opportunities where the both countries can uh, lead into this sector. Uh, saying so, uh, we kept this format as a, a technical presentation, what Spain can offer us. And uh, then followed by this, we'll have a panel discussion. We have a valuable uh, panels, panelists from the sector, from the industry, the R&D, and uh, the storage. So with this note, uh, I just wanted to add a few housekeeping rules. We request you everybody to keep, it, though it is kept open because it is going to be a dialogue, I would request you to keep uh, the audience, I mean, the participant to keep on the mutes uh, till there is a session where you like to uh, ask a question. But throughout the uh, uh, webinar, uh, you can send your questions in the chat box and we will answer you at the end of the program. So I just wanted to pass on to my colleague, Rama. So he will uh, address the gathering. Over to you, Rama. Thank you. Thank you, Jay. Uh, good morning to the audience here in Spain and in Europe, uh, those who are connecting from, from, from this side of the of the Atlantic and good afternoon to our Indian colleagues and, and friends. Uh, very welcome everybody to this webcast and particularly greetings and thanks to our Spanish ambassador in India, who is Excellency Jose Ramon Barañano and to Mr. Adrián Gutierrez, Science and Technology Councillor of the Embassy of Spain in New Delhi and to the Delegate for India, South and Southeast Asia. Les queremos eh, dedicar un saludo muy especial en, en nuestro idioma nativo, eh, tanto por ser los organizadores del evento como por tener el gusto de, de tenerles entre, entre nosotros en, en, esta importante, eh, en este importante encuentro tecnológico para hermanar más India y España en, en materia de energías renovables. Y agradecer también su participación y esfuerzos por promover el encuentro y encajarlo dentro de sus compromisos de agenda. So now we are switching again into, into English and uh, GWEC would like to congratulate this relevant uh, wind energy technical dialogue about hybridization, grid integration and energy storage systems. And thank to our top expert selected panelists, their availability to take part and uh, share their knowledge, views and chances in order to strengthen the technical relationship between Spain and India in such critical matters for the development of the industry in, in, uh, for the renewable energy growth in, in this very relevant market as it is India. I would like to highlight that this dialogue uh, is giving a new push to the cooperation between Spain and India, which we uh, like to remark because uh, in the scope of renewable energies, this, um, uh, cooperation started at least 10 years ago between the Spanish Ministry of Energy and the uh, Indian Ministry of New and Renewable Energies with the engagement as well of the uh, Energy and Resources Institute, Terry, at that uh, time in order to exchange knowledge and capacity building in renewable energy policy and technical developments, including at the time as well aspects related to renewable energy grid integration as it is the matter today. We would like to remark the strong support provided at that time by the Spanish Wind Energy Association to arrange the visit of the Minister of New and Renewable Energies in 2009 to Spain to follow up the increasing performance and technological, technological improvements in the turbines made in Spain. Support which is still in place with their engagement in the current dialogue that we expect may lead into a strong business and technical cooperation among companies and institutions of both sides. So um, let's start with the agenda for the dialogue and I would like to hand over the floor to Jay to move on. Jay. Thank you, Ramon. Uh, may I request uh, Adrian to start with his inaugural note? 
Uh, Adrian, you're on uh, mute. Thank you very much, Jay. Well, welcome to everybody. Very good evening in India and afternoon in Spain. I would like to start by particularly thanking Ambassador Baragnano for being with us here today. And also a special thank note to the teams of GWEC India, IFEED, CDTI Ministry of Science and Innovation Spain, and the Spanish Wind Energy Association, as well as to all the different panelists from India and Spain for their commitment and their participation in this initiative. Without your support, this event would not have been possible. Just as an introduction, uh, during the visit of Prime Minister Modi to India, uh, of India to Spain, the Prime Minister of India to Spain in May 2017, both our leadership signed a joint declaration where research and innovation cooperation was highlighted as one of the three main pillars to underpin the bilateral relation. In this same line, both India and Spain agreed at the Joint Science and Technology Meeting Council held in Madrid on a roadmap to push for a stronger research, innovation and business cooperation in selected areas of mutual interest, including wind and renewables. As a result, CDTI and the Ministry of Science and Innovation Spain are delighted to partner in the organization of this tech dialogue exchange with India in wind energy and with special focus, as it was already mentioned before, on hybridization, grid integration and energy storage systems. The purpose, the objective of this event is to promote research networks, technology and business partnerships, raise the technology brand of Spain in India, and by and large, bring India-Spain research and innovation cooperation in wind and renewables to a higher level. Even if Ambassador Baragnano and the following speakers will be sharing with you some relevant facts about Spanish wind energy sector potential, I would not like to miss the opportunity to unveil some of Spain's research and innovation efforts and capacities in wind. When it comes to investment in, in, and when it comes to an R and D investment in public support, national investments in wind energy R and D in Spain stood at approximately 90 million euros in 2018. The Ministry of Science and Innovation played its role supporting with public funding and stimulating private R&D investment by Spanish industries in their wind technological development journey. During the period 2016 to 2018, CDTI has supported a total of 24 industry-driven R&D projects in wind energy, submitted by, uh, rep sorry, representing by budget a total value of 41.7 million euros and a direct contribution of CDTI of more than 22 million euros. Amongst the companies that have submitted proposals to CDTI for evaluation and funding support, you can find from large corporates like Acción Energía or Siemens Gamesa, both present here today with us, to SMEs, to, to small and medium enterprises. When it comes to knowledge generation and technology development, R&D centers like Fiamat, Fener, both of us present as well here today with us, universities and companies have taken Spain to the top position uh, making Spain rank six internationally and third in the EU by number of patent applications. Spain, through its Control Center for Renewable Energy, FECRE, set up in 2006 and operated by Rey Eléctrica de España, has pioneered and been considered a reference model for real-time control and integration of renewables into the national grid. Besides the high level of investment of Spanish companies in research and development in wind energy, there are 20 centers and nine universities actively participating in projects and competing for European and national R&D funding. Just to give you a flair, the R&D priorities these projects touch upon are, for example, desalinization of seawater by wind-powered systems, mini wind turbines, impact of lightning on wind turbines, variable speed electricity systems and grid integration, and wind resource systems modeling turbulence, offshore pilots and structures. With all these elements on the table, I'm very confident that the following interactions have the right potential to translate into technology partnerships, joint projects and alliances between Spain and Indian partners, between Spanish and Indian partners. And in this regard, would like to refer to the fact that Spain through CDTI and India through MNRE and DST Gita do have in place bilateral R&D funding programs through which technology development projects between Spanish companies and Indian entities may be promoted and financially supported. A good example and a success story of this collaboration could be, for instance, 
the joint R&D project between Spanish company Vortex and the former CWET, current NIWA Center under MNRE for wind power forecasting and modeling in the state of Tamil Nadu. With no further delay, I'll give the floor to the Ambassador Baranyano for his inaugural address of this webinar. Thank you and very fruitful exchanges. Thank you very much. I think it's my turn now, no? Yes. Okay. Uh, good evening and a warm welcome to all wind energy stakeholders from Spain and India gathered here. It is my privilege to address you with some short opening remarks related to this event. Its main objective is to promote collaborative research and development and tech-based partnerships across some of the critical issues that are posing challenges to the further development of wind energy in India and internationally. The recent decision by the Ministry of New and Renewable Energy of India to promote supply around the clock power from renewables to be applied on future tenders is a game changer in the renewable energy sector in India. Uninterrupted supply goals do put the emphasis on technological development of three interrelated verticals. And that's, it, and that's why we have decided to focus this dialogue between Spain and India on them. Namely, hybridization, grid integration, and energy storage. This technology exchange was initially planned as a workshop in Chennai last March. Unfortunately, with 12 members of delegation from Spain already in Chennai and few others on their way, one day before the event, we had to postpone this networking activity to avoid unnecessary risk related to the COVID pandemic. Four months later, we still believe in the importance of this dialogue in the rural energy between Spanish and Indian stakeholders as it is a field where both countries share common interests and strong complementarities. To resume this wind partnership, the embassy, along with the Ministry of Science of Innovation in Spain, decided jointly with the Global Wind Energy Council of India to coordinate this virtual dialogue. This taking stock exercise and outcomes will again lead us to coordinate a high level meeting and face-to-face -face interactions in the future in a normal, in the all normal way. I would like to start by setting the, the context in which this activity is taking place. Even if the importance of research and innovation is not new, science and technology are going to play a more important role in foreign relations, productivity and efficiency, and in the process of internationalization of our economies and societies. The government of Spain has recently decided to scale up its effort on science and technology diplomacy with targeted countries, being India one of them. As a result, the Spanish Ministry of Foreign Affairs, along with the Spanish Ministry of Science and Innovation, are coordinating jointly several activities in India aimed at creating research networks, technology partnerships, and price the visibility of Spanish brand in different areas of expertise. A concrete implementation of this joint India-Spain tech dialogue is, tech is this dialogue in wind energy. Over the last years, we have been witnessing an ongoing shift towards renewable power as the driver of global energy transformation. Renewable energy now account for a third of global power capacity. Globally, total renewable energy generation capacity reached 2,537 gigawatts at the end of 2019. And out of these, 623 gigawatts came from wind. But coming down to Spain, renewable energy sources covered 40% of the total energy demand in Spain with wind standing as leader with a share of 50% of it. With uh, 25,000 megawatts of accumulated capacity in 2019, 
Spain is the fifth country in the world in terms of installed wind power after China, US, Germany, and India. Our government considers wind energy a national priority and steps toward increasing installed wind capacity have been taken. By 2030, wind power in Spain will, su will supply more than 30% of electricity with an installed capacity of 40 gigawatts. Spain has an enormous potential in this sector, and our industry is today present in 27 countries. Export reached 2.4 billion euros in 2019, placing Spain as the third country internationally by wind-related export revenues. Besides the business capacity, Spain also stands out in terms of wind energy knowledge generation and technology development. Research and development centers like CNR, CMR, present in this meeting, universities and companies have taken Spain to the top position in patent application, sixth internationally and third in the European Union. All in all, I'm fully confident that this bilateral dialogue will soon translate into new technology, business and institutional partnership between both countries. I wish you a very fruitful exchanges. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ambassador. Uh, now may I request uh, Toma to make his presentation. I will just share his presentation in short while. Over to you, Toma. Okay, uh, good afternoon. Uh, thanks, Jay, for the presentation. Uh, thanks, uh, Cedeti and the Embassy for organizing this event and GWEC. Um, I don't know, Jay, if you want yeah, me to just, to share the sc my screen or you or you will. Yeah, it's, it's sharing a few few seconds. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Perfect. Uh, you have to turn to the first slide, please. Well, in the meantime, um, uh, I, I am going to present myself. I am Tomás Romagosa from the Spanish Wind Energy Association. I am the technical manager. And uh, uh, what well, I am going to try to, to give a short presentation just to put in context uh, the rest of the presentations and the round table that will come later so that the audience can understand better what is the situation of the wind industry in Spain and to understand what are the capacities and the big experience of our companies and, and of our value or of our value chain that we have in Spain concerning the, the wind energy sector. Uh, if you can please move to the next slide. Um, the Spanish Wind Association, uh, we represent uh, more than 90% of the industry in Spain. We have more than 200 members, which involve all the value chain of the industry, uh, from wind farm developers to wind turbine manufacturers, engineering companies, service providers, all kinds of companies related with services or manufacturing of, of wind components. Uh, as you can see, 200 members is a big issue. and and not only because of the volume, but also because of the experience that uh, they, uh, all of our companies have uh, that dates from uh, more than 20 years ago. And therefore it, it provides a very good capacities uh, in all kinds of aspects related with wind energy. If you can move to the next slide, please. Mm. List J. Yeah, it's taking just it's taking a while. Look. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll just to uh, start uh, yeah, to, to show the audience where we are coming from. Uh, although the ambassador has already given some some tips about our sector, um, Spain has been one of the first countries in the world to start the deployment of wind farms at a large scale. Uh, we started in the late uh, 1990s and since then we have been installing around 1,000 to 2,000 megawatts each year. Here we have reached uh, our current values of uh, almost 26 gigawatts 
installed in the end of uh, uh, 2019. Um, in the last years, we had some several renewable energy auctions in 2017 and 2018, uh, which reactivated uh, all our sector after some years of uh, of no installations due to regulatory issues. Uh, and currently, uh, the wind energy supplies more than 10, 20% of the electricity demand coverage in Spain. Uh, it is the second source of electricity uh, just after nuclear power, uh, very near, with nuclear has 22%. Uh, some, in some months and some years, we have been the first uh, source of electricity. And uh, relating to uh, wind integration in the grid, uh, we, we have some peaks uh, over 70% uh, of maximum coverage only with wind generation. So this gives the idea of the, of the importance that uh, wind power has now uh, in the electricity mix in Spain. If you can please move to the next slide. Uh, thanks. Um, uh, uh, this is the, these are the, these were the current, the current numbers, but if we move to the uh, future numbers, uh, as you will probably know, all European countries uh, have to provide an, an, a national energy and climate plan uh, that is a roadmap towards 2030. And the Spanish plan, the Spanish government has established very ambitious uh, targets in this plan for renewable energies in general, but in particular also for wind power, uh, because the plan is to have 50 gigawatts installed in 2030. This means almost doubling the current capacity. Uh, and this also happens with other renewables as solar PV, which will also reach uh, nearly 40 gigawatts, which is also very high values. So this means that by 2030, the weight of renewable energies in the final energy consumption will evolve from the current 20% to a 42%. Uh, this is the final energy consumption, including electricity, but also transport and other uses. So this means that only in electricity, renewables will cope with more than 70% of all the mix, which this means that our electrical system will rely mostly on renewables in the near future. If you can move to the next slide. Uh, this is uh, graphically what I was telling. In, uh, in the near future, wind and solar will squeeze fossil plants uh, to a very low utilization rates and out of the market. Uh, coal plants indeed will disappear from Spain uh, before 2030. And nuclear plants also will diminish the production uh, in a very important way in the next decade. Uh, so this is a, a challenge for our electrical system because it will have to rely on renewables uh, in, in a very big part of, of the time. So uh, uh, the electrical sector in Spain and all the companies that have to do with renewables and in particular the, with the wind sector have been working since a lot of years to make this possible and to provide solutions. If you can uh, move to the next slide, please. Another factor that uh, we have in Spain uh, is that we have a very limited commercial exchange capacity with the rest of Europe. Our interconnection with the rest of Europe through France is very low. There are very few power lines which represent less than the 50% of the interconnection ratio, 5%, sorry, where the European recommendation is to have at least 10% uh, or 15% uh, in, the, in 2030. So this is an additional challenge to integrate uh, um, so many renewables and wind power because we have to rely only on, the on our own capacities. Uh, we cannot rely on the help of other electrical systems in Europe or the, the continental grid because we are considered like an isolated system, uh, electrically speaking, and this makes it a more difficult challenge. If you can please move to the next slide. Uh, so some of the challenges that uh, we face in Spain, they are similar to uh, what other countries will also face, but we can say that we are one of the first countries that we are uh, facing with so many renewables and with uh, a, a, such a significant change in the, in the way of operating 
the grid because we are moving very fast from the, a traditional concept of operation with centralized supply by large synchronous power plants and with a power flow that goes from high to low voltage levels, we are moving very fast to a new scenario where uh, we have increasing distributed power generation. We have a progressive substitution of conventional power plants and with bi bidirectional power flows. And this means that the generation is getting away from the consumption. So we will have to reinforce all the electrical grid. Also, it involves that some of the grid points, grid connection points are getting saturated with renewables and, it, and that curtailments will start to appear. Uh, so we have to look for ways to, to diminish this. And also a very important thing is that renewables must get involved in balancing and in ancillary services to support the grid, to support the TSO. Uh, these functions were traditionally done by other conventional uh, power plants, conventional technologies, fossil fuels, but now renewables and wind farms have to take this responsibility. Um, you can please move to the next slide. So some solutions that are being implemented in Spain, if you can go to the previous one. This one, thanks. Uh, some solutions that uh, companies uh, together with the TSO and the sector are working together uh, to, to be able to cope with these challenges. One of them is to implement new grid codes to upgrade the performance of the wind turbines and the wind farms. Uh, now solutions are being implemented so that wind farms can participate in frequency regulation, uh, also in fast fault current injection, in inertia emulation, in voltage control, in fault right uh, through uh, requirements, so that there are uh, several projects uh, that are investigating in, in new solutions and also all commercial wind farms ha have already to implement some requirements in these areas. If you can move to the next slide. Uh, another factor, uh, Adrian already commented on this, uh, is that uh, the TSO has a, a, a control center for renewable plants since 2006, which has been a model for the rest of the world and has been copied in other countries uh, because wind farms can already receive uh, uh, orders uh, and uh, an automatic operation directly from the TSO and this makes possible to, uh, for renewables to participate actively in the system security of, uh, of the electrical system. Uh, another factor is that um, uh, wind power participates actively in ancillary services and balancing markets since 2016. Uh, for example, in tertiary frequency regulation, deviation management or, or secondary frequency regulation also. This is something that is, it is also new in the wind sector in Europe, at least, and Spain has been one of the first markets to implement it. If you can move to the next slide. And of course, another solution that is being worked in our sector is to implement hybrid solutions and storage systems. Uh, it, we have an advantage is that we have in Spain because of the latitude, a very complementary profile, generation profile between wind and solar PV, uh, which makes very attractive this kind of solutions, uh, uh, both in a daily basis uh, and also in a yearly basis uh, with a seasonal complementary profile, uh, which is very good to implement these projects uh, economically for, for the developers. And also it, it makes possible to take advantage of the one unique uh, grid connection point for several installations. If you can move to the next slide. And so for a specific application for hybrid solutions and storage, uh, our companies are working in several projects to implement new functionalities together with the wind farms uh, so that uh, the complete system, the wind farm plus the storage system or plus hybrid system with PV uh, plants can provide a system inertia or primary frequency control, secondary frequency control, uh, black start services, reactive power compensation or other services like curtailment minimization, very important for developers, tertiary frequency control, voltage support or capacity firming. These are things that 
uh, our companies are very accustomed to work with now and uh, soon will be implemented in, in our market, in our electrical market. Can you please switch to the next slide? And just to finish, uh, in Spain, uh, concerning hybrid and storage solutions, uh, till now the, they have been limited to research and development environment and experimental plants because these figures were not defined in the Spanish regulation. But recently, uh, uh, this year, uh, the regulation is being uh, evolving so that uh, hybrid and storage solutions can allow for the installation of commercial projects uh, uh, and to have auctions, a specific auctions for hybrid projects and storage projects. So that is very good news because now the regulation allows for uh, installing extra capacity in an existing wind farm, for example, using the same reconnection or to participate in the daily ahead market on the auxiliary services. So, uh, I want to end here my presentation. Uh, there are uh, more slides like an annex that you can uh, consult for reference, several projects uh, concerning hybrid solutions and storage systems in Spain uh, developed by the wind sector. Uh, but you can, uh, as they will be commented by other companies or by other people later on, I will not enter into detail. And well, I hope that I have been able to show the capacities and, and a quick overview of, of what is our sector and, and what is the experience that we can provide uh, to other markets. Thank you very much. And I, I am available for any questions you may have at the end. Thank you, Thomas. Now I request uh, Senna to make the presentation while I just share the uh, presentation in the talk while. Uh, yes. Yeah. Henrik. Uh, yes. Can go ahead. Yeah. I will just 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 go ahead and introduce yourself while I'll share your presentation properly. If if you can share it, I would appreciate it. Yeah. Right away, I'm doing it. Yes. I I hope everyone can hear me. Um, this is Enrique Gonzalez. I'm a business development manager in the National Renewable Energy Center of Spain. And uh, I would like to thank the organizers of this uh, uh, WinTech Dialogue to, to invite my organization and also uh, say hello to all the listeners to, to this uh, dialogue. Okay. So uh, just give me a minute. Uh, uh, again, just have it. Yes. You can go ahead and uh, I can just share it. Quite. Yes. Okay. Uh, ju just an, an snapshot of uh, what what Sener is. Uh, just to just uh, you to better understand uh, next slides and information. Uh, Sener is a research and development institution based on Spain. Um, we uh, we are fully dedicated to renewables. Okay. Okay. Yes. Next slide, please. Okay, the, that one, perfect. Uh, as I said, we, we are devoted to, to research and development on six technologies or six technical areas, which are uh, the following ones. Wind energy, solar photovoltaic, solar thermal, bioenergy, energy in buildings, and grid integration. So what we, what we do across those uh, six areas are basically uh, four main groups of, of, of things or, or services. We perform research and development and technology transfer. We also perform testing of components uh, from manufacturers. We also support our clients for the certification of, of components and systems. Um, occasionally, we also offer training and capacity building and um, we've done many, many technical assistance projects and feasibility studies, uh, all of them uh, regarding these uh, technologies. Okay. There is a plenty of information of, on our website about Sener, and uh, um, I would be very pleased if anyone asked me after this about uh, my organization. Okay. Next slide, please. Okay. Uh, with this, with this uh, uh, picture, I would, uh, I would want to, um, to show our approach to uh, the topics uh, today in this dialogue, which are hybridization, energy storage system, grid integration, 
and uh, a bonus, a bonus, uh, a bonus topic, which is energy management system. I would like to speak about that. So, in terms of hybridization, uh, let me tell you what, what, which is our understanding. Uh, hybrid plan is the one which has uh, two or more generation systems, and at least one of it is um, one of them is a renewable source. Uh, hybrid systems may or may not uh, have storage on, on the installation. And another thing is that uh, in the past we used to speak about microgrids or mini grids and so on. And now is, uh, I mean, the, uh, uh, we are moving to, to, to hybrid plants. Uh, that means that for me, uh, there is a point of upscaling. We are speaking about uh, bigger installations. We are speaking also from shifting from, uh, let's say, demo projects or small projects to commercial projects. That's the one thing that the previous speaker was telling about. And what is our activity uh, within these hybrid plants is designing, trying, helping with the design and also offering our technical assistance for, for them. In regards to energy storage systems, you know there are many available technologies. Not only lithium ion batteries are available in, market, in the market, many other alternatives are available. Uh, mm, energy uh, focused or power focused. We also have uh, flywheels, we have uh, ultra capacitors, we have pumped hydro, we have flow, uh, redox flow batteries, many other things to, to, to store, many other ways to store the energy. Okay? So for us, uh, it's been always uh, critical to, uh, uh, to perform the right sizing, the right selection, and um, uh, at the end of the day, providing the, the, the accurate uh, technical assistance to, uh, to the project developers, to the EPC contractors, everyone, all the stakeholders in this market of energy storage and, and wind uh, farms uh, in order to get the best on, on their projects. So we also uh, offer this kind of, of procurement support, which is also a very concerning thing when, when everyone gets to the point that they need to get uh, these uh, energy storage systems. In, regard to, in regards to grid integration, which is our view, uh, simulations and studying, grid code, uh, compliance, and also power electronics are items that have to do in this uh, grid integration uh, issue. Okay. And finally, in top of everything, we consider that the, uh, the, 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 the critical thing is the energy management. Okay. The smart energy management is uh, the thing that rules the installations and at the end of the day, it will give us a an, an, um, an, an step forward in this hybrid plants uh, with the storage or not. So as I, as I was saying, it is a key element and this energy management systems needs to monitor, control and uh, manage the uh, installations in a smart way. Uh, in our philosophy, we also consider that um, an energy management system must be something that uh, must be easy to commission, uh, quick commissioning. And obviously it needs to be something that uh, understands the communications and understands with the other elements of the, uh, of the plant, of the system. So standardization and common communication systems is something we, we, we need to integrate always in the energy management systems. Okay. So uh, next slide, please. Okay, so this is in a practical manner, uh, our uh, application, our uh, view on the energy management system. Um, from all the uh, past years where we've been dealing with new um, hybrid systems, microgrids and uh, things like that, We've been, uh, we, we have uh, designed an uh, energy management system, which uh, is the, the one you, you, are, you, can, um, you can see in this slide. You have, um, it's, it's like a um, touch screen where everything is integrated. You may see also some, uh, some screenshots of the application. And uh, let me tell you about what, is it, what it is about. Uh, it is a configurable system for either for generation plants or any generation systems and energy storage. It also integrates uh, its uh, advanced strategies for the management of the plant. It's able to provide uh, grid services 
Um, it, uh, it has also an, uh, a front end, which is easy to be customized with, customized with plant elements. It integrates, integrates uh, market prices and renewable, uh, renewable resource, uh, renewable uh, forecasting, okay? Uh, the control of the plant elements is integrated. Uh, it uses also standardized communication protocols. I, as far as I remember, uh, Modbus TCP IP is uh, the main one. And it also, I mean, everything is integrated, is embedded in the same uh, um, hardware, software platform. And what does uh, come out from this energy management system is obviously information, valuable information, reports, alarms, and answers to con contingencies uh, that uh, has, has been, or had been uh, previously defined. Uh, you can also have this uh, web interface uh, for remote monitoring. And obviously in this kind of systems, you must always, um, let's say, um, uh, set up uh, different uh, levels of access for the users uh, um, uh, in order to, uh, to protect uh, the system and, have, uh, and manage it uh, properly, okay? So next slide, please. Okay, let me tell you, let me tell you about two samples um, on, uh, based on our uh, expertise. One project is um, uh, about uh, one Spanish um, uh, utility which is uh, uh, which has upgraded uh, an existing uh, wind farm it's not a big farm i think it was like uh, eight megawatts for wind turbines and uh, they added a redox flow battery and uh, with this redox flow battery and the energy management system we now uh, this utility is able to um, to um, to um, um, carry on with uh, deviation management strategies, tertiary regulation, and rapid smoothing. Now it is on a validation uh, stage, a long-term validation stage. Uh, these, uh, the, the screenshot, the picture uh, shows particularly uh, the, uh, the, the scheme, uh, let's say, of this, uh, um, uh, of this system, okay? Another project we are involved now uh, with the energy management system is a Spanish uh, wind uh, uh, independent power producer that uh, they are uh, designing, they are building, and they will operate uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, system, which is um, a hybrid plant. It's a wind farm plus a PV, PV plant, okay? 25 megawatts of wind power and between six and eight uh, megawatts on solar photovoltaics. And now, uh, now, now there is a discussion of uh, trying to, um, uh, to come out with the most rewarding strategies, considering that, that the wind installation and the solar installation are overpowered. I mean that uh, um, they have, the, the, if you put together power from uh, each one, you get more power than uh, the one you are able to evacuate. So uh, they, they need to perform a very, a very smart uh, management of the hybrid system in order to get the best value from this, uh, from this uh, hybrid plan, okay? So next, next slide, please. Okay, and just for your information, let me tell you about uh, several projects we've been involved where uh, we had uh, hybrid system, microgrids, energy storage system, and so on. The baseline of all these projects is that uh, they were uh, demo projects. Um, and they were trying to show that uh, hybrid plants, energy management, energy storage, grid integration were um, uh, useful, uh, useful um, activities, useful systems to get some uh, particular uh, targets uh, achieved. Okay, so uh, if any of you are interested, I can facilitate more, more information about, about, about these, these projects, okay? Next slide, please. So that was uh, all I wanted to tell you. Uh, thank you very much. And just once again, if you are interested, we can uh, come back with more information. Thank you, Greg. And uh, now I request uh, Ignacio of uh, CMAT to join in and we'll, I will share you the uh, slide meanwhile. Thank you.
you, I think you're in mute, mute thing, Ignis. You can just go ahead. Yes, and, yes yeah. it's okay. Sorry. Yeah, Thank ahead. you, Jay. So uh, I was on mute. So hello to everybody. So my name is Ignacio Cruz. I, I am working for CMAT. Uh, I am the head of the wind energy division of CMAT. Uh, CMAT is the main public uh, research institution in Spain on energy matters. So it covers the activity of CMAT covers all uh, technologies from nuclear to fossil fuels technologies to renewable energies nowadays. Uh, it's a big uh, center with more than 1,400 researchers with several facilities all over Spain. The main headquarters are located in, in Madrid, but there are facilities in the southern Spain for solar matters mainly, and other, other facilities in the northern Spain for wind and biomass, or uh, facilities in in east northeast for social and uh, social acceptance of technologies so it's a, a big uh, center and here i am going to give you a snapshot of the activities related to to hybridization with wind energy some of them not all just to to give just a, a brief idea of our activity and our possibilities Thank you, Jay. So first of all, I would like to, to thank the CDATA uh, from the Ministry of Science and Innovation to invite us to, to participate in this interesting dialogue. And to the Spanish ambassador for, of course, to India, um, and to GIVEC, to the Global Wind Energy Council, uh, Jay and Ramon for this invitation. So let's go to the to our activity. So CMAT has been working on hybridization with wind, but also with other technologies uh, since uh, more than 35 years. So here uh, you can see one of the uh, former uh, projects that CMAT was involved in the in the 90s in 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 Canary Islands, in Fuerteventura, in the southern of uh, small island Canary Islands. This is a, a wind diesel system. The important thing of this uh, system was that the, this was a high share uh, wind diesel system. That means that the system was able to operate without any, just in, in, in periods with high, high wind, it was able to operate without any uh, diesel consumption. consumption. So, so both diesel uh, engines were shut down and the system was operating, forming the grid to supply a small village in the southern of this island for different loads. So we see water desalination, ice making, uh, ice uh, making for fishery, and obviously um, power for lining and other metals. And everything just based on the wind turbine, a wind turbine, a 225 kilowatts wind turbine, and two flywheels. At that time, still made flywheels, very weighty flywheels, rotating all the time. Uh, that was uh, This project was working during years, and it's an interesting uh, uh, application that, uh, that shows us uh, our capacities. Please, Jay, next one. This is another project. Is, uh, it was uh, developed in the Canary Islands too. This is another island, it's Grand Canary Island. And this project was, uh, my opinion, was the first grid forming solution because there was uh, other uh, power source except wind. So this system was just for seawater desalination. So it was able to manage the load. Uh, it was a, a, a system based on two wind turbines, two 250 kilowatts wind, turbine, wind turbines. And it was operating in parallel to a flywheel again that uh, together was, uh, they were able to, to keep, it, keep in limits, in the limits, the grid parameters, frequency and voltage in order to power supply the, 
the consumption. In this case, several uh, facilities for seawater desalination. Uh, uh, just to, to say, just to, to keep in mind that these wind turbines that we, we use in this project were pitch regulated wind turbines and full power converters with turbines, both or them. The previous one, just uh, to keep in mind, just before, to, uh, the wind turbine that we use was a, is a very well known wind turbine in India. I, I know that it was the V. 27 from Vistas, uh, it was a pitch regulated wind turbine, but uh, two, speed, two fixed speeds wind turbines, so two generators, uh, no power converter. Thanks, Jay. So the next one, pro okay, it's, it's okay. Next project is this, uh, another experience with different wind turbines. They say that they, we are using different wind turbines, just trying to find the best solution or trying to, to analyze the, the advantages or drawbacks of different uh, technological solutions. So this is the uh, wind turbine. This is a 50, wind, 50 kilowatts wind turbine. This is tall regulated and fixed speed regulated wind turbine. And this is a wind diesel system, a high share wind diesel system. So it's able again to, to power supply the load uh, with uh, uh, the wind turbine standalone. Just uh, if the wind resources is, is enough to, to to, to produce the, the, the required energy. And we developed here a flywheel, a high speed flywheel for this new project in order to, uh, to be able to switch it on the, the diesel engine. Uh, so in a TMR, there is a line to develop flywheels and short-term energy storage in general based on flywheels, but also on ultra caps, ultra capacitors and sometimes both of them in order to keep uh, keep the grid parameters, the weak grid parameters in uh, in, in the limits, in, in inside the limits. Yeah. Uh, please, the next one, Jay. This is another experience. This, is a, this was a, a wind photovoltaic diesel system. Uh, this project, the project Cyclops project was, uh, developed it in, in two phases. Phase one was uh, uh, based on a wind turbine, a 10 kilowatts wind turbine, a 5 kilowatts PV array, and a battery and energy storage system based on uh, lead aided batteries, and a power converters, all of them same, uh, same size but different configuration, sometimes DC-DC converters and sometimes uh, AC-DC converters and one inverter. The difference between the Cyclos 1 and Cyclos 2 was, was something similar that this is this, wanting this to happen in the big system nowadays. So in the, the first system was one way, was all the energy came from the generators and goes directly to the the energy flows to the down to the battery, and then the inverter supply power supply the, the loads. And the second cyclos uh, system was uh, in, includes a uh, four quadrant inverter that was able to uh, change the flow of the energy to the load and sometimes from the load to the to the battery. So it was able to. Uh, it was uh, able to operate in a bidirectional energy flow. So energy can go from generators, uh, conventional generators, uh, from, from the load back to the, to the energy storage. Uh, so the energy from the load was based on fossil fuels, for a uh, uh, digital generator, just in case. That's operating as a, as a backup system. Please, uh, Jay, I think it's... this is another project, Inter project. This was a very interesting project with five demo projects. This is just the project, demo project that we developed at CEDER, CMAT, uh, in uh, our facilities. But there were five different demos with different challenges, some of them based on hydrogen energy storage, some of them uh, splitting the, the, the wind turbine power converters in two parts, uh, the red, wind turbine with the rectifier and then a power line in DC in direct current and then 
uh, power converters just to uh, power supply the energy. In this case, it was a wind turbine of 250 kilowatts. It was a very new, brand new wind, wind turbine because it was a one blade wind turbine. It was a new prototype. And the idea was to, to integrate this wind turbine, the operation with this wind turbine in a weak uh, grid, uh, limiting the surplus energy with a chopper and a dump loads just in case. So it was, uh, it was developed a special control system, a monitoring and distributed control system that it was able to, to operate the wind turbine without uh, trouble. Uh, even in, in uh, situations with a, with a very limited uh, parameters of grid. Yes, uh, okay, please, the next one. This another evolution of this project it was uh, based uh, going to the smart grids. It was uh, the, develop, the GB project, it was a balanced network energy managing system with intelligent uh, distributed generation. This was a system, a TIC system. It was a ICT system uh, based on several, several uh, uh, loops of control in order to keep uh, working a micro, a big grid, microgrid, just in uh, essentially the microgrid is the whole center. So all this research center was operating as a, some kind of sub box uh, a living lab operating uh, as a micro grid and it was needed to include some new energy storage systems like this you can see the lithium ion uh, batteries that were uh, integrated in the system in order to keep the parameters in some uh, uh, side of the of the power line and it was all of them controlled, uh, all of them were controlled by, by the, these uh, uh, different level loops with different level of intelligence uh, in order to keep, uh, keep alive all the system for all the time. Please, uh, can, do we can move to? This is, the, this is the center and you can see here just very briefly the different, uh, different uh, power generators that are located all over the center. The center is located in the northern Spain, 250 kilometers far from Madrid. And uh, uh, here you can see the different solar stations, solar PV stations, uh, wind turbines, different energy storage solutions distributed all of them based on hydro pumping, on flywheel, on batteries, on different technologies, uh, some different loads, electrical loads and thermal loads too. Uh, and this is a, a overview of the, of the, uh, this uh, facility, this uh, center, research center uh, facility of CMAT. Next, please. Here you can see, yes, uh, the, uh, capacity stall of the different generation distributed units, uh, the energy storage distributed units. You can see small wind, solar PV, combustion engines, mechanical energy storage, uh, hydro pumping system and uh, kinetic energy storage. And finally, electrochemical energy storage based on lead acid batteries and li uh, lithium ion batteries. Next, please. This is the layout of the center with the different transformers, all of them monitoring, monitored uh, in order to gather all of the data from the energy flow from one place to other, from the different buildings. For, there are uh, PV arrays roof mounted and wind turbines roof mounted too, uh, mounted. So there are different uh, generators in different places. So, so we are analyzing all the flows and we use this just to validate models that we are working on. Yeah. May I request Ignish could just uh, make it a little more short because we are running out of time. 
Okay, yes, yes, I think it's this. Uh, yeah. this uh, these are just the methods, just to know the statistical layout with the different methods that are located all over the center uh, in order to monitor the micro, this micro grid. Please, uh, next. This is another project, just the positive project. It's, it's, uh, it's an European project. Uh, it's very interesting because we are going to transfer all the knowledge that we have been gathering uh, coming out from these uh, different experiences, uh, small, medium scale to the big system, to the Spanish system. So we try to 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 transfer this knowledge the, uh, to the in order to uh, to improve the flexibility of the future uh, power system with high integration, high share of renewable energy sources. Please next. I think this is the last one. The next. Uh, this is. Uh, some conclusions about these uh, ideas. So we say that just uh, with uh, renewable energy growing by 20% or of, of more in the overall electricity generation, the sign objectives for renewable energy plants are shifting from producing energy at the lowest derivative cost to maximize profitability. Sorry, this is one new uh, change. Several research and commercial efforts have investigated how to size respectively generation and storage assets together for hybrid power plant systems, including wind, solar storage, and other technologies. This includes microgrids all the way up to utility scale hybrid power plants. So this is another the scale is changing. So now we are going to large, larger systems. However, even as many renewable energy industry companies are announcing and pursuing hybrid power plant commercialization strategies, many open-ended questions still exist related to their design, operation, and control. In many cases, solar and or storage will be added to existing green plants to increase the capacity value. So finally, the methodology, methodology for optimal sizing of last wind PV hybrid system is still under development. Criteria: a short circuit power in the connection point, land availability in the installation site, mutual effects at shadow PV, turbulence, wind, and others uh, are, are very. Uh, and even the energy storage, uh, sorry, energy market option, as merchant on PPR are going to affect to the new projects that will be closer to hybrid solutions using several technologies, uh, renewable energy technologies. So thank you for your attention. Sorry for the delay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, and now may I request uh, Adrian Raman to moderate the show and uh, the speakers to join us, please. Thanks, Jay. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, after this uh, approach to the Spanish um, developments in, in, in hybrid projects and energy storage and, and renewable energy uh, grid integration. Let us move into, let's say, into our Indian uh, scope and start with the Indian speakers, uh, this dialogue. And I would like to, to, um, to hang over the, 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 um, the questions first to uh, Mr. Balram, um, from Renew Power, who is a, a, a company that is forerunner IPP in the Indian real and energy sector. And thus uh, he can uh, for sure give us his uh, view and his, his opinion about how, how do uh, Mr. Baldram see the hybrid power plant opportunity and the future development in this segment in technology and size and cost uh, mechanisms in, in India. Mr. Balram, please. Yeah, good afternoon. Good afternoon, everybody. I think thanks for this question. And uh, see, first of all, we have to see the Indian renewal scenario. If you see as on date, uh, we have around 38 gigawatt of uh, wind uh, installed and operational and around 36 gigawatt of uh, solar installed and in operation. And the same volume is in, under construction. So as everybody knows that we have a huge plan as a country uh, reaching up to 175 gigawatt by 2022. So it's a huge, but now we have started feeling that uh, 
as especially the grid uh, is become little bit is becoming difficult to manage the grid so the focus is shifting uh, from plain vanilla addition to a kind of hybrid addition where at least we can have uh, a kind of uh, from giving it a shape of inform power to form power up to certain extent we know we can't replace the form power but up to certain level uh, and definition of uh, hybrid in india is co located uh, wind and solar plants and both getting integrated at uh, substation level at a 33 kv level depending on the configuration and so from plain vanilla uh, 35 38% of wind or 20% of solar we get a pl of around 45 to 50% this is point one and the second major driver which is forcing us to think of this new uh, finding out the new mechanism is uh, the transmission line in india you know is very very difficult to construct a transmission line it takes years to complete and uh, <coughs> all the plants are uh, remotely located we have to construct 50 60 kilometers of transmission line constructing a transmission line has own issues land local issues and uh, the cost involved in it so finally after working on transmission line you find that it's not getting utilized uh, if you have plain vanilla solar or wind plants so that's also uh one um, driver which is uh, uh driving us uh, to think in this direction of making it a kind of better plf sites so whether we want to make a group of hybrid wind solar or something else and anyway we know the next step will be to add storage to that uh the government is also moving in this direction i think uh, his excellency also talked about uh, uh, this rtc bid which is very talked about and i am happy to say that my company we won that bid uh, it's around the clock bid uh, supplying 300 megawatt is at any point of time and 80% uh, is is a kind of uh, not round the clock i should say but there are monthly compliances there are yearly compliances and we want to build it absolutely through renewable sources so for that we are adding around 900 megawatt of wind and around 300 megawatt of solar so that we can at any point of time we can give a firm uh, 300 megawatt of uh, power to the grid the fourth point which i want to talk it uh, is a kind of hybrid only a peak power tender which has not so talked about but we uh, again happy to say that uh, our company won that auction is a kind of peak power so the requirement is <clears throat> to give the firm power during the peak hours of the demand that is in the evening 6 to 9 and <clears throat> in the morning hours 6 to 9 and we have to provide the firm power so uh, mnre and uh, all uh, uh, states uh, seki were responsible for conducting the bid everybody is trying to find out uh, Uh, like innovative way where we can increase the penetration of wind and solar and somehow we can make better utilization of resources and we can give the shape of uh, this inform power to a shape of firm power and then we will we have to add stories to that thank you thank you very much a very clear answers and i guess that uh, this is a particular situation that is as well uh familiar in other places of the world with this lack of infrastructure in order to 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 see how renewable energies can grow uh, in 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 worldwide in, in in other markets but let's switch into a different question now related more with with uh, o&m practices and the the question would be what do you think are the opportunities and challenges in, in managing the performance of hybrid power plants Uh, aspects with respect to O&M practices and regulatory requirements. Yeah. So, as far as O&M practices are concerned, I should say that uh, uh, we are treating, as far as we are concerned, we are treating it as a, uh, a wind plant and solar plant, and third party will be the <laughs> third part will be the integration of it. Uh, if we add storage, as I told in the peak power plant, we have to add 150 megawatt of uh, storage capacity. so uh, that kind of skill we have to develop so there are uh, advantages that okay we have the sufficient uh, uh, wind maintenance overnum skill available in, within the country we have sufficient uh, uh, solar uh, operation maintenance skill available in the country this uh, battery storage yes that's a new kind of thing for us we have to develop that kind of skill uh, and integration of that 
uh the advantage will be it's a kind of a huge plant we are constructing at the common place 300 megawatt of solar 300 megawatt of wind and 150 megawatt uh, of uh, storage so it's a, a kind of pooling of resources we can have the common team we can have the uh, common technical manpower we can have the com a common uh, office we can have the common vehicles so it's a kind of synergy and i am sure in the longer term that will be of advantage uh, to all so i don't think uh, uh, this uh, operation maintenance will be of a challenge to us except yes we have to develop a kind of uh, skill to handle the storage which as on date uh, we lack as far as country is concerned thank thank you very much mr balram uh, let's let's move into um, a different set of questions for the director general of navy um, Dr. Balaraman, Dr. Balaraman, the question is that um, since India is moving the new direction of renewable energy market, how do you uh, feel that NEEF's uh, role in integrating existing and new technology in helping the industry in this direction? Thank you, Raman, and thank you all the panelists and also the participants. Okay, as uh, the follow up what Balram was talking about, Balram Mehta, similar name we were both hold on hybridization part of it. If you say at the grid level, it's already hybrid. At the local level, how exactly we need to talk about hybrid? This is where the new is presently working. We are working on hybridized project where we are trying to have a project of connecting the, the wind, uh, wind turbine, the solar plant, along with the storage and developing a necessary controllers and also the converter so that we can make is a the pump power or dispatchable power. This is one area presently we are working along with the other partners, international partners. So this is a way we are trying to move on the hybridization perspective for the new And also we are also moving on how exactly we are trying to operate the wheel with hybrid methodology and we are developing a mechanism for forecasting of both wind and solar power together to make sure hybrid is going to operate. Okay, these are the two perspectives presently are working. And moving forward, we definitely want to have a more collaboration with our other partners so that we can have a joint learning and move forward in developing the technologies. Okay, many thanks. Uh, Dr. Balaraman, uh, you are an expert in, in power grid management as, as well. So uh, the question is in that since uh, we would like to, to, to hear your thoughts about the economic logic in, in, in converting older wind or solar farms to hydric power plants. In an Indian context where the ancillary market is still yet too major in comparison to the European electricity market. See, if you try to talk about on the wind and solar, let us very clearly understand is our intermittent powers. Okay, this is where the forecasting and other aspect is going to help in making sure you're going to make some kind of a dispatchable aspect of it. And the next dimension is to try to talk about other market mechanism, how it's going to participate. I hope that's a question you're trying to ask me, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, see, definitely presently there are a few players already possible in the market. And if you, if you are aware, the India is already having a robust market, not only on the day head, but also on the real time market is already open. And in addition, right from say 2003, four onwards, we are also having what is called a deviation settlement mechanism. It's also another type of market, which is going to be operating based on the, the frequency based tariff. Okay, that is going to take care of any kind of imbalance operating the system. So presently there are a few players who are operating on this particular aspect of it. And I will definitely see in the future, we are going to have one is on the PPA based, other is on the market based renewable energy plant coming up in the system. Thank you very much, Mr. Balaraman. Uh, let's now move in the, in the next set of questions to the area of storage. Um, and this is uh, questions for Dr. Rahul at AISA and Customized Energy Solutions. The question would be, uh, do you think India has got in the right time as a global storage energy market and has picked up uh, what, what size and cost effectiveness roles will play as an Indian market is price sensitive? Um, sure, so uh, I think uh, we are at a right uh, time. Uh, there has been a lot of work which has happened in last five years in trying to get the market ready. 
so again for any market to take off there are a lot of policy and regulatory efforts which are required so starting from 2014 uh, uh, ministry of new and renewable energy has been looking into these aspects related to the hybrids and uh, hybrids with energy storage uh, and as a result you are now seeing series of these tenders coming up from solar energy corporation uh, what uh, the renew power tender uh, which uh, they won for the peak power as well as rtc had showed that these hybrids are very well now economical there was uh, till recently a tendency to think about you no know, india cannot live without thermal power and there was a thought that okay although we are adding renewables we also need to keep on adding more thermal power but with these recent tender results uh, that has uh, been now starting to get questioned so i think ultimately in terms of the price point the way the energy storage uh, technology prices have come down uh, these hybrid projects are here to stay and we expect actually uh, going forward uh, uh, these won't be on the fringe like one off tenders but we do expect actually that majority of the tenders uh, beyond 2021 uh, would be actually a hybrid tender so it is very important that i think all, all the, the other players follow the lead which renew has uh, uh, shown uh, and we need to start building capacity and uh, also develop capabilities for uh, designing uh, optimizing as well as operating these type of asset uh, there are uh, examples there are like for example companies like customized energy solutions uh, uh, we do have experience of managing more than 10 gigawatt of uh, uh, assets in uh, north america including some of the earliest uh, uh, wind storage or solar storage projects and co-optimizing them so i think we are trying to do that type of a uh, capacity building in india and i think in terms of the technology we are more or less ready uh, it just that on the some of the regulatory and contracting side there are some delays but now uh, world bank has also issued a energy storage partnership where there is almost around 500 million dollar are getting assigned for financing energy storage projects in india and through that and similar initiatives also with uh, climate impact fund we expect now uh, these hybrid projects will uh, start getting mainstream uh, on the other hand side we also expect on a distributed side uh, uh, re plus storage projects will also uh, uh, play a role directly with commercial industrial customers or with townships or acz uh, because that's a point where uh, ultimately if you see the cost uh, which is paid by the consumers in india people are paying most of the commercial customers are paying tariff of close to 10 rupees so hybrid power plus storage uh, uh, is becoming actually very cost effective alternative for them oh thank you very much and 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 what is your, your recommended parameter uh, in in the sizing requirements of of battery storage and uh, systems you know what would be uh, so it depends yeah so in terms of the sizing i think it would depend on the application so for example dr balraman uh, mentioned about uh, the deviation settlement mechanism and some of the penalties uh, which are coming in so now if the focus is purely on minimizing penalties on that then probably you can just work with one hour kind of a storage so uh, for such applications typically we have seen around 30 percent of the power rating and one hour storage that can work uh, but if you're looking at things like what uh, uh, renew and uh, balram mentioned about uh, the peak power uh, uh, tender where they are trying to uh, assure four to six hour of firm power delivery then you need storage which is uh, uh, size for at least four hour duration or maybe even five five or six hour duration so four to six hour is the uh, duration which is required uh, so depending on the application i would say that uh, uh, right now we expect a uh, number of tenders coming in india will have somewhere between 20 to 30 35 percent storage in terms of the power rating with one to four hour of uh, uh, energy duration uh, but as we are seeing around the world uh, beyond 2020 to 23 uh, the uh, power rating of storage could actually start going above 50 percent we are now seeing in number of places uh, especially in europe uh, in the us and uh, uh, Australia, where people are looking at almost like 70 to 80 percent of the power rating as a storage capacity. Uh, so that also, I think, slowly will start coming up. Oh, fine. So uh, let me let me see how the Spanish industry can help you in all these uh, new challenges you are facing in the Indian market, and and, and we have been developed here in Spain since uh, a number of years ago. So let let me hand over to to Adrian, and he will. Uh, conduct the, the, the questionnaire with the Spanish companies. Adrian, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you very much, Ramon. We'll 
be moving now to the Spanish side of the round table and digging further on storage and hybridization technologies. My first question goes to Enrique Iriarte, Head Energy Innovation Projects at Acciona. Enrique, Acciona has been pioneering the design of storage solutions with renewables in Spain, for example, in the plants at Parasuain and Tudela, both in Navarra. Could you elaborate further on this and share with our Indian counterparts Acciona's technological experience in the field, please? Yes. Hello to everybody. Thanks, Adrian. Yes, about uh, ACCIONA, the biggest global operation exclusively in renewable energy, we have developed several project pilots related to hybridization with storage since 2015. Uh, as you said, wind plus storage in Barasuen and Plivi plus storage in, in Tudela, both in, in Spain. Our approach is to integrate the storage system using commercial components and to develop in-house the global energy management system that compromise both the power plant control and SCADA system, where we integrate algorithms developed by, by our technician to maximize the lifetime of the batteries in parallel to give functionalities to the, to the grid. This is, this is important. Because as you know, uh, depending on how we use the batteries, the life is going to change a lot. So we have developed algorithms to uh, improve the efficiency and the life of the batteries. Speaking about the, the functionalities and the scenario uh, of these functionalities to the, to the grids, there are, for example, inertia or frequency regulation, voltage regulation, we also can manage with the, the control system ancillary services functionalities as rain wrap control, capacity reverb, secondary and tertiary uh, regulation that is very important depending of the, of the markets and also uh, typical energy management functionalities as firming, for sure arbitrage uh, and others. Why we decided in innovation department five years ago that uh, energy storage degradation is, is, is important, uh, is, is, is clear, it's a key element in the transition to a more sustainable energy mix. Allows to us uh, these resources as wind and solar to operate at a full capacity during peak generation period by storing excess energy until it is needed to meet later demand. Also, uh, in ACCIONA, we are committed to contribute to the industry transition to a low carbon energy mix, while maintaining safety and, very important, reliability of supply. Uh, our company, we are at the forefront of the energy transition through solutions to facilitate the integration of the variable generation renewables. This is, this is the key. The wind and the sun uh, is not 24 hours a day. So we need the storage, we need the batteries uh, to, to put into the grid and manage the power uh, producing. For example, in the pilot plant of Parasoin uh, is a uh, a plant with two different kinds of batteries. A fast response battery of one megawatt, but only during uh, 20 minutes, and other slow response battery, but with greater autonomy uh, during one hour. With these two batteries, in that case, are batteries from, from Samsung Lithium Technology, these are connected to a wind turbine of 3 megawatts from Nordex and we are capturing all the energy is generated in the wind turbine and we can manage and we can uh, use all these functionalities I mentioned uh, a few minutes ago and decide with the control when and how to, to use them. For sure, this, this is uh, also integrated in our uh, remote control center. Uh, other important issue about the energy, the energy storage plant is that it's certified by 
DMB GL. This was a, a process using the Bristol recommended practice that is based on the industry standard of a safety, performance, and reliability. And we developed this pilot plan and was the first energy storage plant certified by a DNB GL. So we are prepared for the following commercial uh, project that, for example, in Arsena, we are going to develop one project in Australia and other project in, in US. As the natural next step after a pilot uh, plan, we have been uh, learning and developing technology to uh, put in commercial, uh, in commercial projects. And also with the, with the PV plant plus storage. We did uh, two years ago also in Spain, in the south of, of Navarra, in Tudela. In that case, it's a battery of shaft of one megawatt and 650 kilowatt hour of power. And in that case, the same strategies, the same functionalities, in that case, we have developed and adapt for a PV plant. Also, was giving the possibility to, to give to the grid ancillary services, uh, arbitrage, uh, etc. In this case, the, the PV plant plus storage also takes into account the production forecast for the facility and also the market prices. So in the software that when we are controlling the plant, we can take in account this information for the best uh, strategy because one of the problems of the energy storage system is that we need to pay them. It's an important investment, so we need to capture the best prices in the market and we need to capture uh, from the um, grid uh, managers or others a uh, input a uh, income to pay this this investment so it's important to take in account this this information uh, and also in both pilot plants we are using the blockchain technology we are using a platform called green chain that in, in the uh, past uh, weeks was chosen by the World Economic Forum as one of the more disruptive technologies in the last decade, in the last 10 years, to ensure the origin of the renewable energy that we are producing in our wind farms or in our PV plants, but also maybe we are storage, uh, storing in, in our batteries and we are selling this energy to our client. So it's a platform that we can ensure to our clients that the energy they are consuming and the energy they are paying for is 100% uh, renewable from a specific wind farm or from a specific PV plant. Uh, thank you very much, Enrique, for the detailed explanation. Just like uh, picking on uh, one of the last things you've mentioned during your intervention, which was the application of uh, blockchain technology uh, for real-time control and traceability of renewable energy generation. Uh, I would like to, to see if you could explain a little bit more uh, how this blockchain platform works. And from what I understood that it's already being implemented in, in the, the plant that we mentioned before, but Aswain and, and Tudela. So if you could share a little bit more on, on that, it would be very, very helpful. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes, yeah, sure. Green Chain is a blockchain platform where we are introducing all our assets, all the generation of our assets, all our storage systems, and we are connecting with our clients. The, the clients of Acciona, they are able to know in real time that the energy that they are paying for, the origin is from one a PV plant or one wind farm, and also using a blockchain technology. The blockchain technology is adding a transparency and traceability to this kilowatt hour. It's impossible 
to, to change the, the data. So blockchain technology, in that case, green chain platform, is giving us data immutability and very important in real time visualization. There are in some countries that the uh, public institution is checking, is matching the generation from producers to the consumers. In that case, we don't need a, a central a platform or a central institution directly with this pl platform we can ensure to our clients, our clients can put a, a video wall in the offices and to, to show to all the visitors that they are consuming 100% renewable energy and from one uh, asset, from a PV plant or for, or for a wind farm. The, the, they have the possibility to see the energy consumption uh, in, in, in a day, uh, accumulated in a month. Also, they can see if there is, for example, wind energy, uh, photovoltaic energy, hydroelectric energy, or, or if it's energy produced in a wind farm, storage in a battery and after this uh, connected to the to the grid so this this uh, platform also permit us to include the information of the social commitments of acciona because acciona in every project we did we also are taking care of the community uh, in the area, in the region of the asset. So part of the money of this project, we are reinvesting in social uh, actions. Also, the clients can see that if, for example, we are helping in, in Australia to a aboriginal community where is our farm for education, for sport, for access to primary electricity, the client that is paying for this electricity also they are getting two targets. Get 100% clean renewable energy but also they are contributing to these social actions of ACCIONA. So all of this is in, is in real time. Is, uh, we are tokenizing, it's a, a new bird, we are tokenizing the kilowatt hour and also we are tokenizing the sustainability and we are offering directly, directly this to our clients. Thank you very much. Thank you. Enrique. Uh, we'll now move on to Hernando, head of hybrid systems at Siemens Gamesa Renewable Energy. Uh, and number one would be to understand a little bit more from, from Hernando. What are the overall efforts of the company in the direction of hybridization and concrete, and if there is any concrete project, for instance, the hybrid wind solar project at La Plana near Zaragoza, where uh, SGRE has already used energy storage systems. Thank you. Thank you, Adrian. Hello, everybody. Good afternoon. Um, Yes, uh, we started, as, as Enrique mentioned, also Siemens Gamesa uh, start with pilot projects and we started in 2015 also our hybrid uh, plants in La Plana. We started as, as an off-grid plant because at that time we wanted to test uh, functionalities between our solar and wind, adding afterwards some storage. And after this starting point with off-grid, we, we went to on-grid in 2018. Um, and as you mentioned before, during the, the meeting, it's very important the control of this hybrid plant because we want to focus on just one brain for the complete plant that manage and optimize all the energy coming from the different sources. And this is our HPC, the hybrid plant controller that firstly has been managing this off-grid plant with uh, diesel plus solar and um, wind and storage. But afterwards we move also, we, we left uh, the, the diesel when we went on, on grid and we start testing also some different kinds of storage we have at, at this 
a plant in near Zaragoza, we have uh, lithium storage and also um, flow uh, batteries. And we test both at the same time and then different functionalities. We test uh, connecting to the grid, but also sometimes disconnecting and uh, testing with different lots we have inside the plant. And, and also where we, we try to uh, see uh, functionalities uh, as, for example, testing some black startup or turbine in this uh, testing plan, seeing the, the future of the, of the market, because we see that the more we penetrate in, in a grid, the more is needed other functionalities that just storing energy for time shifting or, or uh, as simple ancillary services as frequency response. We need something more. And that's what we're testing now, we, what we call weak grids, uh, because one of the markets we working with also is, is uh, what we call, uh, well, we have um, small islands where we have to supply energy and the grid is not so stable uh, as we will need for the wind turbines. So we need something more from the, from the storage and uh, some grid forming from there. And that's what we try to, to, to use or Laplana's testing plant. And also, yes, from this point, we went to um, commercial projects. We, we are about to, um, uh, to make the commissioning of one plant in Philippines, uh, Philippine island of Mindoro, uh, where we have uh, 10 megawatts uh, wind plus six megawatts one hour storage. And well, uh, this is the first step, not in pilot plant, but also in commercial. And we try to sell uh, not only this uh, product, but also services, as you commented at the beginning of, of this meeting, uh, EMS. Okay, we have uh, services that uh, complement uh, the product. Uh, and this is, I, I, see, I see this is the future. Uh, thank you, Hernando. Uh, now, moving on to the second question, I have come across a project reference of Cines Gamesa uh, in hybridization uh, of solar and wind energy uh, in India at Kavital, Karnataka. So I would like to hear from you a bit more on what has been the experience so far uh, of SGRE in this project and also what are your impressions on the new opportunities that this new uh, round-the-clock uh, policy that MNRE has announced may open for uh, Siemens Gamesa Renewable Energy business in India. Thank you for the question. Uh, as you know, uh, we, we have a very, very good um, uh, participation in the Indian market from uh, the beginning of, of uh, Siemens Gamesa India. And uh, well, as, as was commented also, uh, India, uh, hybrids for India are solar plus wind. Uh, after that, we can add some storage, but at the beginning, the, the complementarity of both sources is very, very good. And we've been testing this first in our Kuti plant. This is a small two megawatt, one point, uh, two megawatt uh, wind plus two, 1.7 uh, solar, where we test uh, this complementarity and, and also our controllers. And once we saw that, uh, well, our, our, our capabilities and not only the technology we have, but also the EPC capabilities in the region were ready for the market. We went to a bigger plant. This is the one you commented, Ka, um, Kavital in the Karnataka state, where we have um, 50 megawatts uh, wind plus 28.8 solar and it's still up and running uh, with our HPC controller. And we're happy to see that not only um, the product went very well, but also our o &M, uh, service as learned as, as our colleague from India commented that um, we have now uh, very strong uh, capabilities on maintenance uh, and skills developed in solar Okay, and all that knowledge comes from India because we learned how to, uh, how to maintain a hybrid plant, uh, a big hybrid plant, and to teach our team that was used to uh, maintain a wind plant, uh, also uh, the solar uh, plant and, and the both together. So this, this is a synergy that we know that is feasible and we can uh, spread all worldwide. And 
talk even, talking about the, the new opportunities we see from Seki, we, we've been seeing from close and we see that this is the, the, not the future, but this is the present in India where we see that all the next uh, auctions we will receive will be uh, hybrids and we will participate not only with the uh, wind plus solar, but also with storage. We have a manufacturing plant for storage there in India. And uh, well, we, we are very interested on this and it's very good for the grid and, and also for the team we are working there. So we hope that's going to be uh, a big market and for all of us. Thank you. Thank you very much, Orlando. As we are running shorter time, I'll quickly move to the next set of questions. And these go uh, to Barlovento, uh, especially on grid integration. Miguel, please. Uh, question number one would be, uh, we do know that Barlovento has an extensive portfolio of advanced electric consultancy services, going from electrical studies to on-site tests to verify the compliance with grid codes in different countries. But within the wind domain, could you please share uh, what would be the major verticals that Varlovinto, uh, where Varlovinto could add value or you know, provide services to promoters of wind energy or hybrid projects in India? Hey, uh, thank you, Adrian. I, I am the last of the speakers in the round table, so I will try to be as quick as possible because I know that we are really short of time. Uh, as you have mentioned, uh, Parlamento, we are an engineering company. We are not developers, we don't have installation, we are just a pure engineering and consultancy company. Not only uh, in the field of uh, uh, grid integration, but also in, in, in other fields. Uh, yet related with um, Utilization and storage, uh, we have some, some experience uh, just talking in commercial scale uh, with different issues. We have been working some projects mainly in Latin America, in Colombia, Costa Rica, Ecuador, of course in Spain, and also in North of Africa, in which uh, we have been. Uh, looking for first, uh, well, for most of the things that we have that has been arose in, in this uh, webinar. But uh, first, uh, in the resource, in the complementarity of uh, PV and wind, those are hybrid plants. Not only in terms just in complementarity of production but also taking into account things like uh, demand, uh, electrical tariff, and so on. Uh, also, we have uh, been taking care of shadows. One of the problems that uh, arose in wind PV uh, plants is that the wind turbines make shadows, a lot of shadows. They are really big. So this is also one of the things to take in, into account. Mm -hmm. Yet uh, focusing in, in, in electrical, uh, we have been carrying on some years ago, two years ago, I think, a, a really interesting project because we were measuring the behavior of a hybrid plant with a commercial wind turbine and PP, just to test if the joint control of the, of the units could cause any disturbance or not to the grid with really positive uh, results. The behavior of the hybrid unit was uh, according to expected, according to, to what the grid was uh, demanding. Yet uh, focusing in, in storage, uh, we are now involved in a quite interesting project in, in North Africa, a project uh, ordered by one of the great uh, uh, regulators, that's to design a storage unit, but not uh, with, uh, with the complementary production in mind, or just to have an, an storage for big demand or so on, but that's only 
eh, focus in stabilize the, the grid. Uh, the idea is to design a um, mobile uh, storage system that will be moved to the weakest point of the grid in, in different times. That's uh, thinking in stabilize. It's a big project for, for the country. Uh, figures maybe don't sound much, but it's a uh, storage capacity between two and three uh, megawatts. Uh, we are still close in the engineering phase. So uh, we are dealing with that. But, but really interesting because uh, this um, storage, uh, we will show, uh, it's not uh, useful just for production to be made of uh, low production uh, times and so, but just to uh, stabilize and to contribute to to, to the grid. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, and moving on to the second and last question from my side, uh, I know that Barlovento is already providing energy consultancy services to main international players and that you are also interested in bringing your expertise, your equipment to India. I also know that you've pers pursued certain market opportunities but, uh, for your equipment, but that the pricing has proved to be a constraint. So based on your experience, my question would be, uh, experience in other countries, I mean, my question would be, what would be the potential ways in which Barlovento could work closely and support with know-how manufacturers, IPPs, or public bodies here in India? Mm -hmm. Okay, yes, it's true. Uh, we have uh, participated in a international tender to supply the equipment, electrical equipment, to, to make electrical tests, uh, for right through tests in India. The main constraint, uh, one of the constraints was, was the price, but manufacturing in Europe to, to send to India is expensive. Uh, all of you know that uh, uh, costs are uh, higher in general in Europe than, than in India. Uh, we had uh, some experience just to transfer technology. This is just in this field with uh, foray through uh, test technology uh, with two main companies. One of these was uh, with ABB. We designed a tailor made design of uh, test equipment uh, and we transferred the technology and the design to ABB. The equipment was uh, full manufactured by ABB in Finland, um, I think it's still running, it was uh, many years ago uh, when we do that. And overall, uh, probably the most interesting uh, uh, project was one we have with uh, CTG East in, in Brazil. Uh, CityGas was, uh, is, sorry, um, complicated to design center. But it's uh, close to the center in, in Spain. It's a, a center to promote and investigate uh, R&D on new technologies for energy. Now, mainly for, for renewable. So in collaboration with them, we define a pure tailor-made equipment to Brazil necessities. Uh, we share the engineering, uh, at the end, we manufactured the equipment in Spain, but that's because it was much cheaper than in Brazil. Uh, even including the transport, the taxes, and everything, uh, Brazil is really expensive for manufacturing. So, so we, at the end, manufactured in Spain with the collaboration of, of, of uh, the Brazilian company. At the end, the idea was not only to transfer the technology, but uh, uh, the knowledge of how to perform tests, how to analyze, uh, how to get accreditations to be an official laboratory for electrical measurements, of course, with uh, OM uh, manuals, uh, training and equipment. So, 
almost everything. And pure cellulose made to, to the Brazilian necessity. Uh, we consider that maybe uh, this approach is, um, could be more feasible uh, to India to adjust pure design, manufacture, and sell that uh, in, we have seen that is not, uh, not really possible. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you, Miguel. Uh, very true, affordability is always something which comes uh, on the way when uh, we're trying to develop business, business models with India. Uh, mm -hmm. I do feel that there could be other way around to bring your expertise and know-how to India, perhaps through the partnership with yeah. local manufacturers or maybe piloting it to uh, the NIWES Center being the organic research center under MNRE. But this yeah. discussion could be taken further after this. Uh, and I'll now hand it over again uh, to my uh, colleague Ramon. Adrian, uh, yeah. Ramon has to leave. I think you have to take over for the next uh, two questions. Okay. And uh, we have some questions for the audience. I think okay. we should make it short and you know take the audience two questions. Fantastic. Okay. Thank you. So, there's a combined question, number one, which would uh, mainly be addressed to uh, Enrique from Thener and Dr. Balaraman, uh, Director General Niwe. Basically, uh, the question would be to see if both of you could highlight any specific research areas uh, that are either pursued at Niwe or Thener or other institutions for optimization of the operation of hybrid power plants specifically regarding controllers, converters, connection topologies, operational program logic, and so forth. Here, the floor is yours. Thank okay. you, Adrian. Okay, as we previously were talking about, presently we are doing one hybrid already project where we are trying to design the converters and controllers for wind, solar, as well as storage hybrid as a perspective. And we are trying to have the complete control and dispatchable power from the hybrid part of it. This is one area we are already working on that. And of course, we look for the partnership in further enhancing that particular aspect of it, particularly the storage and the storage applications part of it. The next very important we are trying to talk about into having a micro grid of our campus. So our, we want to showcase our campus as a grid independent, is going to operate completely with RE. This is another area we are working on the micro grid. I think this is another area definitely we can look forward with the seller support. It is to talk about the controls as well as on the the logic for PLC part of it, how to move forward with the driver supply balance. And of course, there are a lot of options that are available in the country today as we're moving forward with a lot of hybrid and with the ministry recently coming out of the RTC tenders. The RTC tender is not necessarily restricting very clearly with only the RE, but we are also trying to talk about with the RTC with the integrated with the thermal power plants also. So definitely this is going to be opening new dimensions in controlling the wind and solar assets along with the thermal power plants, how to make sure it's going to be RTC available in this regard. So definitely we look forward for opportunity for presenting and also work towards this particular approach with the center and the other agencies in Spain. Thank you. Senor, over to you, Enrique. Yes, uh, yes, uh, very quickly. Um, in fact, uh, we are, uh, right now we are, we are uh, accomplishing uh, uh, two initiatives I would like to tell you. Uh, very related to the topics of this uh, WinTech dialogue. Uh, the first one is uh, we are focused now on, um, on designing uh, a power electronics uh, device and a converter, a medium size a smart converter that could master hybrid grids and, or uh, microgrids or, or whatever. We are putting a lot of effort uh, on this smart converter. We, we think uh, that this is a, a good solution that could fit into some uh, market uh, cir circumstances, okay? The second initiative uh, has to do with the energy storage. Uh, we are aware, and some of the uh, previous speaker mentioned uh, some tips about how to deal with the lifetime of the energy storage of the batteries. So we are now investigating, uh, you know, apart from, you know, a state of charge, a state of health, a state of uh, lifetime and so on, getting a new approach on um, trying to uh, determine uh, the best management of the energy storage system in order to get the best lifetime or a extended lifetime of this uh, energy storage systems. So that's an ongoing work, very tough, 
uh, very difficult, but uh, I think we will, uh, we will succeed on offering the market this kind of uh, additional uh, additional um, protocol or we will know we will see how we we address the way or the shape of this but i think it's it's very it will be very very useful for any installation any plant or any de developer who, who is concerned about the, the the lifetime of the energy storage uh, thank you uh, now moving on to dr rahul uh, could you please share uh, the challenges in battery storage energy systems when deploying them at remote locations with harsh environmental conditions, uh, specifically keeping in mind the Indian context? Sure, uh, that's a very important question. Uh, because a lot of time the uh, energy storage analysis is done at a high level, looking at just spreadsheet models. Uh, whereas with energy storage technologies, particularly the performance depends quite a lot on uh, how you are operating the system as well as uh, in which operating condition uh, the system is being operated. And the three important parameters there is obviously the temperature, uh, humidity, and any dust or other uh, contamination. So all these three factors can have a significant impact on the performance and it is very important that uh, uh, it is uh, considered appropriately. Uh, we have seen it even in actually moderate uh, climatic conditions in Northern uh, uh, America, uh, where uh, the projects have failed because sometimes people in terms of uh, designing the project and trying to cut down the cost have just sized some of the auxiliary systems to the minimum necessary requirement. And then if you have maybe some failure where maybe you have two or three air conditioning units, one unit fails, then suddenly you realize that the rest of the units are not able to take care of the complete heating load. And especially nowadays, uh, most of the uh, storage battery manufacturers have started putting in very stringent warranty conditions where some of these conditions can actually void your warranty. So this is very important that you pay very close attention to these parameters. The other factor is also you need to have a very good uh, uh, energy management system and you need to have a very good understanding of the application requirement because sometimes uh, we have seen it where people have deployed projects but then in less than one year or two years the projects have failed because they failed to anticipate the duty cycle which was required in that particular application and especially when you're talking about remote projects i think going and maintaining becomes a, a problematic so you need to do as many things so that you can uh, take care of these things in a preventive maintenance mode rather than a uh, failure mode. So having a very good remote monitoring and dispatch capability uh, as well as a simulation tool where you can uh, assess the state of the health uh, of your storage devices is uh, very essential. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Rahul. And last question goes to Ignacio from ZMAT. Uh, we would like to have uh, ZMAT's views on the most appropriate wind turbine technology stall or pitch with full or partial converter, converter, which are being integrated into a hybrid power plant from an operational standpoint to achieve a steady output from hybridization. I don't know if Ignacio is there with us or not. I am, yes, yes, okay. I'm here. I, I, am, I was in a mute, so now again. So yes, about this, your question, the question so I can say that they, we have been test uh, all kind of technologies of so wind turbine technologies in our projects stall pitch uh, variable speed based uh, full variable speed or parcel and in our experience yes, uh, regarding hybrid systems and regarding especially the, the steady state and uh, of the of the power output so we can say that the pitch regulated wind turbines are strongly recommended it's clear so it's possible just to integrate the stall regulated wind turbines and it's possible to to manage but uh, obviously from from the quality power quality point of view so stall regulated is uh, crucial especially for frequency regulation of the systems just to to keep in limit in the into the limits and then uh, about converter, uh, it's clear that the full power converter is from the 
grid quality uh, is is much more re recommended that the, the partial compared solutions like double feed uh, induction generation the, it's clear that the from from for instance for uh, reactive regulation for voltage regulation of the system so it's clear that power uh, full power converters can uh, get all the limits and and the partial converter solutions depends on the speed rotation and speed of the wind turbine. So in the other hand, so it's clear that the uh, pitch regulated full converter wind turbine is much more expensive, but in terms of operational maintenance, which is a very important point in my opinion, that's just uh, even more if these projects are located in remote areas, uh, probably from the operation and uh, maintenance point of view, full power converter are less, uh, uh, better solution than, than other solutions in general terms. Mm -hmm. So that's my my opinion. In terms of cost, it's clear that full power converter is much more costly. Uh, it's a, it's a, uh, it requires a higher investment and it's another important point you have to decide. But from, from the power quality point of view, it's clear that pitch in short pitch uh, full power a converter are much more recommended. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Ignacio. So we are done with all the questions for the round table. Jay, I give it over to you for uh, to continue with the moderation or, or, I, or I step or Can you just wrap up there? And we okay. have two questions because the participants are waiting. We will right. have two questions. And uh, with, I know that uh, participants have been so patient and, and equally mm -hmm. the panel speaker Absolutely. have given a very good answer. But I really want to thank uh, all the speakers for spending the time. Just to wrap up the session and we'll have two questions. Yes, well, very quickly, uh, this virtual dialogue uh, is meant to be an intermediate step uh, through which we can take stock and feed all the conclusions of this dialogue into the renewable energy partnership between Spain and India. Uh, all that will be used for a future high-level delegation that we will plan again to India when situation allows to carry on with the face-to-face -face interactions we tried initially to have in March, but due to the COVID-19, uh, we had to drastically cancel last minute. A second point I would like to uh, highlight is that it was very pertinent, Jay, to name and frame this activity as a dialogue since we did not want to have a unilateral communication, yes. but basically what we wanted was to seek exchanges, engagement and matching of technology expertise, convergences and shortcomings between Spain and India, because we feel that that's the solid basis for sustainable business alliances in future. And the third thing I want to highlight is that this is not meant to be a one time exchange, but uh, that we want to have these conversations going on and that CDTI Ministry of Science and Innovation, the Embassy of Spain, Myself, relying on the support of the Spanish Wind Energy Association and GWEC, will strive to put best efforts to keep the momentum and the conversations going. Uh, just to wrap up, I would say that we will follow up with a thank you email to all the participants in this forum, sharing uh, a report with some of the conclusions, some of the basic exchanges that have been shared between uh, the different participants. We'll also share an information deck with some of the PowerPoint presentations being conducted at the forum. And basically we remain, as mentioned before, at your disposal to take these conversations forward in the best way possible. All over to you, Jay. Uh, thank you, Adrian. I think you made my uh, job easier in giving the conclusion mark. Now I request uh, the questions. I think Saurabh had a combination question with another uh, participant. Can I request Saurabh to Post your questions now. Yeah, thanks, Zara. Yeah, yeah, yeah go ahead. You, uh, my question largely is, is related to evaluating, you know, in terms of large scale grid storage versus localized storage. Right now, what in India is happening that we have solar plus wind plus storage at a single location, bounded by a single contract, and to be done by the same developer. Now, going forward, if you know the magnitude increases finding developers having all these capabilities will be difficult. So against that, if we have large scale grid storage, uh, uh, won't that be beneficial for, uh, uh, you know, for going forward with this hybridization? That is my large, uh, you know, broad question. 
If Dr. Rahul can answer, I think that will be. Yeah. Is there any panelist who can take this question, please? Yeah. Uh, thank you, Sourav. I think that's a, a important question and a most common question. Uh, it's not one or other. I think both have opportunities. Uh, but what we have seen actually the trend is uh, in most of the developed countries, actually the renewable developers end up actually building a uh, internal team which starts uh, looking into such storage projects and they are the ones who are leading the way. So if you take example of say US, there are companies like AES, Nextera, Res America. These are all companies who started actually these as uh, initial just one off projects where they started integrating storage at some one off sites. And right now, if you see the majority of the projects which have got developed, these are the companies who have done it. Similarly, if you see the Australia, the NeoWind uh, uh, system with Tesla. So again, it is done in collaboration with a renewable developer. Uh, the problem with a standalone project is that, yes, theoretically, it is a great opportunity and you can then have more flexibility around it. Uh, but for that, you need to have a much better evolved policy and regulatory system. And unfortunately, uh, in India, that is still evolving. So there are, uh, it would take some time right now, I think, uh, uh, as part of uh, the hybrid system and hybrid projects, there are a lot of other values beyond just the energy cost, which uh, you can optimize even at such hybrid project, including the transmission optimization, curtailment reduction, other things. So I think there are enough opportunities where uh, hybrid projects can uh, work uh, uh, and then uh, later on uh, it can uh, move towards uh, standalone projects as well once ancillary markets or uh, other opportunities are uh, structured. Yeah, thank you. Uh, there's another question come from Dr. Kumaravil. Are you there? Uh, could you just take the question directly? This is the last question which I thought I'd address. Kumar, Thanks, Dr. Rahul. Yeah. Kumar, are you there? Okay. Uh, is there any Hello? questions? Would, yeah, yeah. Kumar, can you? Yeah, go ahead, please. Uh, yeah, this is a question to uh, any of the panel members. I just wanted to know among the existing technologies of the storage uh, solutions, which one can be considered as best when we consider the reliability and the efficiency, forgetting about the cost uh, of it, in terms of efficiency and reliability, which technology will be the best? Just some uh, thoughts on it. Yeah, so the panelists can answer this. Any of the panelists yeah. would like to take? Yeah. Thanks, Dr. Yeah. Kumar. But you see, if you talk about storage, we are talking about traditional storage of pump storage. The pump storage yeah. is even today is the top in the list if you are trying to talk about liability as well as on economics and efficiency part of it. The pump storage, because it has got a very high volume part of it, the storage is high and still it is going to be the number one, you know, you are trying to talk about the green level storage part of it. Of course, others are getting fast catching up, but still if you try to talk about it, it's a question, I could say the pump storage is the still is unbeatable. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, doctor. Thank you, thank you. Uh, so I think is there any more questions uh, the participant would like? You can just unmute yourself and ask directly. I think so. Yeah, I think we can close hey, it up. Uh, if it's, it's, it seems that it's yeah, getting yeah. late over there in yeah, India yeah. and people start to feel hungry here yeah. in Spain. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Finally, I'd like to thank all the panel speakers for the valuable time and the various dimensions they've given us. I'm sure this dialogue will create a new space in uh, transformation into a new business area. And uh, as uh, Adrian said, uh, let us all meet in a physical meeting coming up soon. Uh, of late in this year. Till then, uh, I'd like to thank you once again on behalf of GVEC, uh, Spain Ambassador, uh, and from all the collaborating partners. Thank you once again. Thank you all and have a safe evening. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank thank you Jay. Everyone. Thank you, Adrian. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to everyone. I would like to take this opportunity thank you, to invite all the colleagues to uh, get with India Energy Storage yeah, Alliance. Uh, Rahul, Rahul, I think you have something to point out. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. So, so I just wanted to uh, uh, sort of build on what Adrian mentioned that this is a dialogue and this is uh, not the uh, end of it. This is just a start of a dialogue. Uh, so actually as the India Energy Storage Alliance, we do series of online activities, uh, uh, including there are three working group meetings which happen on technology, policy, and uh, 
In fact, the policy working group is led by one of the colleagues of Balram uh, from Renew Power. Uh, the business working group is led by uh, SoftBank Energy and technology working group is led by uh, uh, Dr. Ashwini from Applied Materials. So there are a lot of opportunities for companies to get involved in actually how this market evolves in India. And right now, most of the policymakers look at India Energy Storage Alliance for giving this feedback from industry back to it. So again, I would encourage all of you, if you want to know more about IESA, uh, I'll be happy to share more details. And also with AWE and uh, uh, with uh, GVEC, uh, we would love to explore the IESA if we can have some uh, MOU to uh, explore ongoing collaboration so that this activity doesn't remain as a one-off activity. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Balram, you like to, you're there on the screen. Would you like to share some interesting points and how you felt this dialogue will emerge now? Uh, good, I think, I think it is a very, very good uh, exchange and there are many opportunities, uh, especially uh, Spain being good as far as wind industry is concerned. So one of the opportunities, we don't have an independent service provider concept in India. So th there can be a good handshake if good companies are available to, for providing the independent operation maintenance services. Uh, then uh, consulting testing is an open field in India. And we have not touched small wind turbines uh, because the way rooftop has taken a shape in India, I think this is a time this small wind turbine sector also to grow and to take a shape. That's another uh, area. And grid management, Anyway, Dr. Balraman has told, but then there's an area which need an urgent attention and then that, that's area of uh, collaboration where we can learn from each other. Yeah. Uh, thank I you, uh, Balraman. I just wanted to tell the Spain team that uh, Renew are collaborating closely on in industry, industry uh, uh, in initiatives. They have been collaborating with IIT Delhi and I think. So if you have any R&D projects where you would like to work with Renew Power, uh, I think you should get in touch with uh, the new team. So from there, we can take it on. This is the, this is for Senar yeah. as well as for Cement. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you all once again. And uh, we'll Thank catch you, up Jay. with the next meeting. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.